two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome back to What's on Tap podcast. I am your host, Stefan. I'm your host, Martin. And today, we are going to drink some big boys. Some big boys from a brewery that is no stranger to this show. We've had a lot of beers from this uh, brewery, <laughs> on the show and off the show. We have. They are kind of one of our favorite breweries. And they haven't reached that um, level, I think, of overexposure on the show like we've had with uh, some breweries in the past where we featured them so heavily. I'm kind of like, I feel like we're shilling for this brewery now. Like Amer? <laughs> yeah, Amer. Um, Omnipolo for a while. Oh. We were really covering a lot of Omnipolo. So we haven't put a slight moratorium on them, but we've we've covered our fair share of uh, of uh, beers from uh, De Morslutl, and um, that's what we're having today. Today we will be covering two more uh, from them. So if you're a fan of the show and a longtime listener, then you know whenever a new barcode beer comes out and we can get our hands on it, we definitely jump on that and try to cover it. Um, and uh, we got one, so we, we missed one. We missed the yellow and black uh, can that came out, I think, in like January, February. I blame Stefan. Uh, I don't blame you. I, honestly, I just didn't see it in the web shops. I think I it didn't t- either. I think it didn't. Maybe it came out of the the most little uh, web shop, but it didn't maybe. get a big uh, release outside of that. No. Um, but the red and black can has gotten a much larger release. Uh, so we have the red and black can, and then we have another one, which is their uh, motor oil series. It is a double chocolate uh, motor oil. With both Tanzanian chocolate and... Uh, Philippine chocolate. Nice. Yes. Um, so the reason we have these two beers is because, not um, because of the web shop, but because of the De Monsluto, um the Guild, which is their... Um, Beer club? Yeah, their monthly subs- well, it's, it's not monthly. Their subscriber club. Their bi-monthly subscriber club. Yeah. So every other month, um, they'll release somewhere between twelve and sixteen beers in a uh, in a, a shipment. Um, I'm guessing that number varies based on the price of the beer. Um, so the first shipment came out. It was came out of the last week of June, um, and it was. Um, 16 beers, uh, cost breakdown was something like uh, um, 800 um, sec or around, I think it was 88 euros is yeah. what the cost of the box was. And which isn't really bad for 16 beers, 88 euros, breaks down to roughly, uh, I think uh, five euro six for cool. uh, per beer, um, <laughs> which is, Pretty good. And when you consider that the average price of the most total beers on their web shop is somewhere around 50 to 60 crowns, um, it breaks down to a pretty good cost um, because you are getting uh, not just some of their harder to find beers like the barcode series, but it's also the, uh, there's actually one special release that's just for the box. We'll see how that goes. We've, we've yeah. seen that in the past where there's like, oh, it's a special beer just for the box. And, and then it, shows it gets up. released on every web shop. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the special release on this one actually was labeled the Guild and it said uh, one indulgence or indulgence one. I can't remember the exact phrasing. And it's a uh, bourbon barrel, I'm sorry, a rum barrel aged uh, version of their Octane Overlord. Yes. Which is a peat uh, smoked uh, stout, which is, and some peat smoked beers can be quite smoky. But it's actually a really great, uh, very balanced, slightly smoky, uh, peat-smoked uh, beer. It's really the re- regular Octane Overlord. Is that really peat-smoked? Because yeah. they, they've had it in peat whiskey barrels. Well, that might be another version of it. But the regular yeah. Octane Overlord is a peat-smoked um, uh, stout. Yeah, okay. Um, so in the box, like I said, there were 16 beers. Um, it was... It was, um, for the most part, only their beers. I say for the most part because there were two beers that were collaborations. Yeah. Um, they were both very, very good. One was with uh, Frontal, which is another um, Dutch. Dutch brewery. And I can't remember the other collaboration, but it was also an excellent beer. 
Um, and then it was a mixture of their latest uh, IPA line. Um, and then um, like half of it was, oh, and then some fruit beers. <coughs> Sorry, some fruit beers, um, which were, were quite nice. Um, one was this, uh, I want to say raspberry licorice gummy wine nice. uh, beer that was, was quite good. And then there was another fruit beer, which I can't remember right now. Um, and then a large collection of, uh, of stouts. Yeah. Because that's kind of their, their, their bread and butter and, and their go-to. So what we got on the show today is two of the, the stouts from that uh, camp. So which one are we going to start with? I say we start with the motor oil and we save the barcode as the, sure. as the teaser. Because um, that's the one that we know we're really excited about. And it smells great. Um, but this so, one I'm really looking forward to as well. The double chocolate uh, motor oil. So it clocks in at 10% ABV. Mm -hmm. And we've had a number of motor oil versions in the past. Exactly. And they call this motor oil now. Because it used to be called motor oil, yeah. Uh, yes. Which is uh, O-I-L-I-E. It, it, it used to be in Dutch. Now it's yeah. English. Yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was the Dutch version of motor oil. Um, and I don't know why they've... Changed it. Maybe yeah, they're trying to get a yeah. larger uh, footprint or something. But um, I love the can. I love the artwork. And then this says uh, anything on the back of the can. Uh, hearty Russian Imperial Stout, deep black in color, with a strongly roasted malt aroma. Uh, this time with an extra sweet chocolate flavor, made from cacao of Tanzania and the Philippines. Best served at 12 degrees since. Uh, did you bring your thermometer with you so we can check the, the, the temperature? I think I think they're right. I mean, maybe a little warmer than 12 degrees. I am a human thermometer. Yes. Do you want to know your temperature? I think there's a penis joke in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, we, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, I'm sure you would. <laughs> or that deep? All right. <laughs> So this, yeah, it smells roasted. Yeah, this definitely has that Russian Imperial style roasted malt uh, smell to it. Doesn't smell anything like chocolate. Yeah, I don't and, get and it's chocolate. named double chocolate, so that yeah. kind of scares me. It does worry me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, let's jump mm -hmm. into this. Cheers, cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um. Well, I have to say, I was expecting a really rich, chocolatey kind of experience here. Yeah. And what I'm getting is a pleasant Russian Imperial Stout with not a whole hell of a lot of chocolate. No. I would Maybe say, a little bit of this, this dark chocolate in the aftertaste. Yeah. Like this 95%. Yeah, yeah, like the really bitter, like 80 plus uh, yeah. percent chocolates where you just need like a little, little bite and then you have like little cognac or something with exactly. it to help cut it. Um, yeah, it's still disappointing. Uh, I was expecting a lot more chocolate on this, especially when you call it double chocolate. Yeah, it's still a good stout. It's thick, mm. it, it coats the mouth nicely, mm -hmm. it has all of the roasted notes that it needs to. It, a ton of roasted notes. It's a little bit boozy actually. Uh, the Morse Little usually makes their stouts a little bit more smooth mm -hmm. and suave. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a perfectly tasty, like, base Russian Imperial Stout. Yeah. It's not a double chocolate in no. any way whatsoever. So in this guild box, did you get the regular motor oil? No, 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 we didn't get the regular motor oil. That's a, sh that's a shame... Because I think this particular beer could really have benefited from being drunk together with the regular. With the comparison? Yeah. Yeah. I think we would be we would get our minds blown. We would go like, wow, there's a big difference. But now we're basing it off the memory of motor oil, which is kind of like this. This is how I remember motor oil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were to give me this and just tell me it's a motor oil, I'd be like, it's yes. very tasty. It yes. It tastes really good. Um, but there, there's nothing here that uh, makes me think double chocolate. I mean, it's a very dry kind of chocolate finish in the end. I think, again, because we're, we're talking about if you had like a um, more pure chocolate. So if you just had like a pure bean kind of experience. But this yeah. says it's um, uh, sweet chocolate flavor. And there's nothing sweet about this beer. No. 
Uh, has a bit of a, he said, a little bit of an alcohol burn in the finish. Uh, but overall, it's a it's a fine beer. So what would you what would you rate this one? I guess a four. See, unfortunately, I have to give it like a three point five. Wow. Well, but because the, the quality is it only because there's no chocolate in it. If you're telling me something's double chocolate yeah. and I get zero chocolate. That's a failure of the beer. I'm sorry. I mean, it's it's a really well made, very tasty beer. If you were just telling me this was a Russian imperial style, I would probably give it a four and be like, Fair high enough. praising this. Fair enough. But if you're going to give me a double chocolate style and then I get no chocolate, I mean, it could be a two then. Because quite frankly, you're telling me it's chocolate. Yeah. I get zero chocolate. Then why? Do you, I mean, what's the point? <laughs> and while I do agree with you in principle, I usually tr- I. I've always tried to to weigh my ratings more towards flavor than towards style. Um, I am a firm believer that what you put on the can is what you're selling me. And if the beer doesn't deliver that, then don't put it on the can. No matter exactly. what you put into it. You know, if you, if you put these two chocolate uh, beans into the can, but you don't taste the chocolate, then don't sell it as a chocolate style. <laughs> no. no. And in the What's On Tap podcast bingo she- mm-hmm. sheet, there's definitely a square that says beer didn't deliver what it promised. Exactly. That's def- that's Oh, 100%. Uh, it's probably the bottom bottom right corner. When, when that happens, <laughs> all of our listeners take a shot okay. of beer. So we'll move from one chocolate beer to another chocolate beer. Is the red and black barcode also chocolate? <laughs> yes. Or better known as... Eight seven one nine 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 two four nine two nine one six. It's so much better than the seven one nine 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 two nine nine two four six two eight one six. Yes, it is. Um, so this is a barrel aged imperial stout with cocoa nibs and vanilla pods. Um, they're printing us so small. A uh, a new dime in our a new dime in our barcode series. What, what is? It's a okay. new dime. <laughs> All right. Um, yep, it says dime. I had to double check that. It's like, it doesn't make sense to me in the in the context. All right. Uh, this beer is an imperial stout that has been aging on scotch and bourbon barrels uh, oh. for a time of 14 months. After aging, we put the beer on a luscious amount of cocoa nibs and prime vanilla pods from Madagascar. Madagascar. Um, to create a most decadent beer for you to enjoy. All right, are you ready for some decadence? I am ready for decadence. All right, and this smells so good. It's like sweet. Smell, smells cho- better. This one smells like chocolate and vanilla and bourbon scotch barrel aging. And yeah, this one has a lot of promise in the aroma. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. And if this is anything like the past barcode series... This is going to be amazing because so far, none of the barcode series has disappointed in any way whatsoever. Mm-mm-mm. That is so much better than the Motor Oil Double Chocolate. Oh, that is like here. That is like a dreamy heaven. Here, there's actual chocolate in the flavor, even though it's just with cocoa nibs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's so much more cocoa or and chocolate flavor in this. The vanilla is there. It's not too sweet. The barrel aging is um, well rounded and, and pleasant. Um, it's really, really good. Um, I, I think this one also is is living up to the to the high. Um, how do you feel about it? I'm really loving it based on one little sip. Yep. <laughs> I need to deconstruct all of the, the ingredients you said, but the, mm-hmm. the chocolate from the cocoa nibs, that's what I first get because mm-hmm. it wasn't present in the previous beer. Yep. Um, so you said both scotch, whiskey, well, okay. and there's, bourbon. There's cocoa nibs and vanilla pods mm-hmm. from Madagascar. Mm-hmm. And then you have... Uh, I don't get any vanilla. Aged for uh, 14 months. On scotch and bourbon barrels. I think I get a combination of those. Uh, definitely some bourbon, definitely some wood. If there's scotch whiskey, difficult to tell. I think that the 
bourbon, actually, I feel like there's a slight difference between the two. Yeah. Where I think that the bourbon is giving more of the base notes, whereas the scotch barrels are giving more of a slightly boozier edge to it. Um, for me, the scotch barrels are a little lighter and sweeter than the than the uh, the bourbon ones, which usually tend to have more of a, a richer vanilla kind of kind of flavor to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a great beer. It's mm-hmm. a banger. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. It just makes me more disappointed about the motor oil. <laughs> it does in comparison. You're kind of like. Oh, why wasn't this better? Exactly. Um, so, in um, keeping in tradition with the barcode series, uh, this one lives up to the hype? It definitely does. Yeah? It's at least a 4.5. Yeah, so A719992492916. Um, I'm also going to give it a 4.5. At least. I think it's a <coughs> an excellent beer. Um, and it just, this series just continues to be an amazing, pleasant experience. Yes. And I, I hope that in the next box we get the green and black uh, can. More barcodes, please. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, oh, so what I recommend trying to subscribe to the Guild uh, box. They only do 400 boxes. Um, so. Uh, you have to be a member to get the box and people have to drop out um, and then as people drop out they bring in people that mm-hmm. have applied so I think you can apply anytime on the website um, I would say you you should um, apply uh, for this I think at 88 euros for the box uh, if you're living in the Netherlands if you're living outside the Netherlands, it's a little more expensive because of shipping costs. Yes. Um, but still, we're talking about, uh, I think the average price breaks down goes from um, 5.5, 5.6 uh, euros to 6.4 to 6.6 euros per can. Um, so it's just a slight increase. I think uh, it's, it's a really good... The first month was really good, and it gives me hope um, for the second month. Uh, overall nice yeah um, so you can find us at uh, Instagram Spotify uh, YouTube y- y- no one no one listens to us on YouTube you'd be surprised there's more people than you would think okay um, what's on top podcast.com wherever you find good quality podcasts yes we'll be there as well uh, somehow and um, until next time keep drinking your dum-dums and